So as I said in the last tutorial, now we will allow the user to forget his password. So let's log out and go to the forget password screen. And here when the user enter his email and press on reset now, we need to send something to the to his email. So uh, we also need to handle the errors. We didn't use form at that time. So let's go to the forget password and I will close everything here. So let's go to the forget password and go to this method and in here we need to implement it. So for this text, it's uh, it's actually a normal text field. It's not a text form field and we're not using forms. And it's totally fine and it's okay. So uh, let's go up and in this method, we need to start writing the code. So of course, the first thing I want to do is to handle the errors. So if the user enter a wrong email address or something like that, we need to show him an error. So how can we access it? We can do an if statement and in here we have this email text controller, which we are using it for the text in here for this text field. So let's do an if statement about it and check if it is empty, for example. So we can access the text and check if it is empty. And I'll do a small check about uh, if it is an email or not. For example, we can check if it if this text doesn't contain at. And of course, as I told you, there's uh, many packages in order to. Uh, I mean, there's many packages for email validation, so you can use it. And I might cover it in the future tutorials. Now I will just do it in this way, just to give you some informations on how to implement it. And uh, of course, let's open the brackets here and start writing our code. So uh, let's add else statement also directly. And now for this F statement, we can call, uh, call the global method class and show an error. So let's call the error dialog. And in here, let's say for the subtitle, please enter a correct email address something like this. Now if I save it and press reset now, now I'm getting this error. Okay. Even if I enter something, I will get an error. It should contain at this simple validation just like this. Okay. Now it would be better also if we do some animation while it's being loaded. So let's initialize our Boolean. So let's say bool is loading and initially it will be equal to false. And what I'm gonna do is to wrap this stack by a new widget, which is the loading manager and give it the is loading like this. And in the else block, now we call set state and now we put the is loading to true like this. And uh, I will actually change the name of the is loading. So let's do it like this. And now we can start writing the code for the forget password and to allow the user to forget his password. And it's something very easy. So how can we access it? Of course, by accessing the OS instance. And now we call something called send password reset email. Just like this. And now we pass in the email. How we get the email is by getting the, by accessing it from its controller. So we do it like this and we call dot to lowercase as we did for the login and register methods. That's it. And of course this method if it is a future, so let's await it like this. And now we can handle the exceptions. So let's wrap this one by try catch block. I will paste my code here and now for this Try catch, I will copy the catch blocks from here. So let's paste it here like this. And of course we need to import the package, the auth package like this. And that's it. So now I will restart the application. And we can test it. So let's go to the login and we can now go to the, or we can actually access it from here directly. 
we didn't implement it we can implement it now let's go to the users and now i can copy this method and search for forget password and i can paste this navigator method here and now change this one to forget password screen like that save it and now if i press on it it will take me to the forget password screen okay so i actually created a new account with my gmail so uh, it will be already found here so let's refresh the application and uh, the email is uh, actually this one so i will just copy it and go back to the emulator and go to the forget password screen and paste it here and now press on reset now now it's being loaded and it would be nice if we show the user that that everything is successful we can show him a dialogue or we can show him a toast which is i will cover it in the next tutorial okay so now i will go to the gmail and here's the email that i got so uh, here it is it says follow this link to reset your project blah 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 password for uh, this email that i used and if i press on this link it will take me to put a new password in here so what i'm gonna do is to use a password from one to nine so one two three four five six until nine here it is now hit save and uh, that's it now let's go here and i will try to log out and try to sign in again so i will enter my gmail and enter the new password or i will enter the old password to try to log in now i got an error this is the old password i used and if i use the new password i just used now and try to log in here it is it's working fine now one more last thing i want to show you is that i got this annoying template here or this kind of email and of course you can change it and edit it so how can you do this is by going to the authentication tab and your firebase console and then go to the templates and then in here you have password reset so you press on it and press on this one edit template and in here you can edit this this template and whatever you want to name and in here you can say from hadi for example or whatever you want so uh, for me i will just keep it like this and for the sign in methods you can edit this google and you can edit the project name so you can name it grocery app for example like this okay and now if i uh, try to test it again forget password and i will enter my email hit reset now go back and now here it is here the name of the application changed to grocery app where i changed as you saw before and the google from here and and of course you can edit your project name also by going to the project settings and uh, you can find it here okay public settings and you can change it from here simple as that Okay, so that was for this tutorial. I'll see you in the next 